Here's the plot summary for my Christmas guide. A college professor connects with a guide dog trainer after losing his eyesight and adopting a seeing eye dog. Short and sweet. Let's get to it. We open to a peppy Christmas pop song in a snowy town square, complete with some craftsman homes and the business Best Friend Guide Dogs. Max the dog is a good boy and it's his big day. He's graduating training school, I guess. Our leading lady, Peyton, takes him for a walk. We meet the leading man, Trevor, and he's picking up his daughter from school. She um, escorts him out and they are on their way home when Peyton stares at him from across the street with Max. It was a little weird. A little weird. A little creepy. It's a lingering stare from across the street. Lots for sure. of kind of stalkery stare, but that's okay. We'll forgive her. So Trevor does not want a seeing eye dog when his daughter asks about it because he has a hard time not making a mess of things without caring for a dog and throwing that into the mix, which is valid. A dog is a big responsibility. Peyton has a jerk fiance who is excited to go on a trip with his buddy Chainsaw <laughs> and some other bros. And he forgot that he was supposed to go to her company Christmas party and meet her dad. His name is Chad. And you can bet your bottom dollar, this is not the last time we talk about Chad this episode. <laughs> Back at, with Trevor, he has an app. Now, I have been poo-pooing the apps, but I have to believe this is actually a real app or a derivative form of it. He has an app where when he gets up in the morning, he can scan his phone in his closet and it will tell him the primary color of each garment of clothing in his closet so he can properly um, arrange his attire to be color coordinated. And I thought that was incredible. I'd never heard of such a thing. Me neither. I also thought that this was incredible. And I love that they're starting to do more stuff like this for folks who are visually impaired. I actually noticed on a box of cereal that we have that they now have an app that will tell folks who are visually impaired where to find specific things on the grocery store shelf. Like, I don't know how it works, but I think it's pretty amazing. And sidebar, Jennifer, I don't know if you realize this or not, but the actor who played the male lead here is actually legally blind, which I thought was really cool. I did see that. I had to look it up because I was like, he's doing a great job. It seems like it might be something that he deals with day to day, and he does. So it's incredible. Love it. So Trevor heads to the college campus where he works, and he bangs his head on some construction equipment because... They're doing some renovations outside in the courtyard and the um, kind of the things in his way day to day move all the time. And he threatens to sue. And it's clear that Trevor is peeved, rightly so. I mean, he, the bump on his head looked so painful. It did. It was he a big old goose egg. Whacked it. And it was it was pretty yeah. painful for sure. Yeah. Yeah. Inside the building, he's a teacher and his boss is asking him to take a break from the after and bleh, take a break until after the construction is done. And Trevor doesn't want to because he's about to begin the study on Dickens. He teaches English. I thought the, oh, maybe you should just take a break from teaching was a little zero to a hundred. What did you think? That seems like it came out of nowhere. Came out of nowhere. And I have to wonder, is it even legal to do that? I think that you can't sort of suggest someone leave their job because of construction and there have to be some sort of accommodations made. It was just... Yeah, I did not. I did not like that subplot, but thankfully, it's not the last we no. hear of that. Yeah, yeah. Okay, back with Peyton, she drops off a pamphlet for a guide dog at Annie's school. That's Trevor's daughter. She Annie tells her dad about it and whisks him away to best friend guide dogs. He's peeved again because Peyton was so presumptuous, which it was a bit presumptuous to just say hey you know what i can do i can fix all your problems here's a pamphlet about bringing another life into your house that sheds and poops and you have to take care of it right i also agree plus Anyways. it was sort of creepy to go to the daughter and back channel that kind of information to the individual who's yeah. actually visually impaired it just sort of felt a little like eh, i don't know when any kid that you say, hey, do you want a dog in your family is going to jump for joy. <laughs> so right. it seems a little skeevy. <laughs> anyways, Tre we learned that Trevor's form of blindness came on quickly over the past two years. Um, he can detect some shapes and light, but not much else. And Peyton convinces them that Max can be trained to be the perfect dog for them. Max doesn't need training, but Trevor does. So he reluctantly agrees and off we go to bring Max into their home. Peyton's best friend encourages her to be done with Chad. And I'm going to say his name like that the entire podcast because that's what he deserves. 
We learned that Peyton and Chad have been dating like 10 months. Yeah. And I wrote, peace out. It's This is not worth it. This juice is not worth the squeeze. Peyton trains Trevor by walking him on a leash through town, which was a little degrading, but that's just part of her process. She owns the business. She's been doing this a lot. Peyton's boyfriend, Chad, shows up at her work to show her a Christmas surprise. She's excited. He opens the trunk, and it's his new golf clubs for his trip with his buddy Chainsaw. Okay. Uh, Chad. Chad. <laughs> My cousin's name is Chad, so it actually makes me laugh that we're <laughs> scoffing at this name this much. Okay, so Trevor's training continues. He's getting used to Max and recalls a dangerous intersection run-in with an electric car once because they were so quiet that it almost was, well, it was almost an issue. So Max could be a saving grace. He's coming around to this idea. Trevor tells Peyton that she smells very nice, and it was a very sincere, sweet moment that could have been creepy, but it wasn't. And then she tells him what the perfume is called. And then he says, uh, why don't you compliment how I smell as well? <laughs> That's kind of sweet and funny. So there's a little flirtation, but you know, Chad is in the picture. The dog learns the common routes on campus and can safely help Trevor work his way around any construction, even if it's different every time. We go to Trevor's office and can we talk about how nice his office is? Goodness. Also, the campus is decked out in garland head to toe everywhere. And I was very envious and wondered if that's true for most college campuses. I didn't go to a university. And art classes usually done with like early December. Yeah, yeah. Probably not I a lot of garland. I, don't I know. can't think there's a lot of college campuses that look like this, but it sort of felt like they better do some things to gussy this up and make this look more Christmassy than this movie plot actually is. So. Yeah. yeah, I thought you'd think that too. Yeah. Um, Trevor talks about how he's lost his confidence since losing his eyesight. So he stands at the podium and asks Peyton, okay, be honest, how do I look up here? And she says, you look dignified, scholarly, and handsome. Oh, snap. Okay. She assures him his students are lucky to have him. And it's another sweet moment. Onward, Peyton offers to tutor Annie's daughter in math, which... Kind of doesn't go anywhere except at the end, I will tell you, Annie does get a good grade on her test paper. So that's nice. Um, she see, Peyton sees pictures of Chad's golf trip surface on the Instagram grid, and he is with boys, his bros, probably chainsaw, and other girls hugging on him. Nope. <laughs> Listen, <laughs> guys and girls can just be friends, but not hugging on each other like that, wearing what they're wearing. <laughs> <laughs> Okay, so we, uh, Peyton and Trevor go to the off-leash dog park that is completely fenced in. So she says, this is great. You can come here. Let Max run free. He can have a big old time. It'll be good for you. You can bring Annie. It'll be great. He tells her that he divorced his wife a few years ago and she met another guy and moved away. So that's where she is. He said that knowing Annie was there when he lost his vision sustained him, but he has agreed to let her have her first sleepover soon and he's a little nervous. So they just have the best communication between one another. I mean, just really vulnerable, really um, get to the the meat and bones of things right away. Meat and bones? That's not the right term. Meat and potatoes? The... Yeah, why not put bones in there? Meat and bones. <laughs> just chew all the meat till you get to the bone and you eat that too. That's, I guess that works. That was too. a little redneck. I'm sorry. It was, I but that's okay. <laughs> Oh, I don't know where that came from. Okay. Well, anywho, <laughs> after the commercial break, we come back to a fancy soiree and Peyton is introducing Trevor to her dad. Did I miss something? Did she invite yeah. him? This made zero sense. It's like out of the blue, we're at this Christmas fundraiser and I'm like, whoa, 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 whoa. We got, we did not get here. You were just at the dog park. <laughs> yeah, exactly. There was no mention of this. It was just sort of like the scene that got us between the dog park and the fundraiser must have been cut for time because it was just out of nowhere that he's there. So, anywho. I, to the point where I thought I'd fast forwarded too much because I had recorded it on my DVR and I was like, oh, I guess I missed the whole section between commercials. No. I really well did it. I was like, no. Dog park soiree. Dog park soiree. <laughs> But listen, it looked like a lovely event. Lovely event. I'm sure it was. When she talked about in the beginning that it was her company Christmas party and that Chad couldn't come, but I didn't hear, and I, if I missed 
didn't if I overlooked it I'm sorry I guess I need to get to the meat and bones of it but it's, it was a little weird but a very nice event like Josh said and um they introduce Peyton introduces the crowd to the newest litter of guide dog puppies and I wrote why is this movie so precious and then um he invites Peyton over to decorate their tree and she goes over and has some time with Trevor and Annie and it was very sweet Peyton then talks to Chad on the phone and says, I was just wondering who's the girls you were with. (laughs) And he says, oh, that's just benign fun. It was the girls from the drink cart and chainsaw thought it'd be fun if we took some pics with him. He's extending his trip four days, so he will not get to meet her dad. He missed the company Christmas party, and I guess he'll be back right before Christmas. Mm. Chad. Mm -mm -mm. Mm -mm. Peyton and Trevor have a pseudo date even though she's still with Chad, and takes him to his old favorite hangout. It's a bar and music venue, and she reserved his favorite bench for them. They listen to music. It's very sweet. She planned this whole date, and I said, they're falling in love, Chad. Who? (laughs) Basically. And was this Jennifer? Because she had asked his daughter to tell her, what does your dad not do? since all of this happened was this Mm -hmm. do we think that this was what she told her i think so okay yeah it was annie what is something he used to love to do that he doesn't do anymore and i think this was it because this was a really this was a really nice gesture although i did have to sort of smile at the bobo dave matthews acoustic set that we got which was the music performance at the and i wrote it down here the bull and barrow so there you go look like a place i would want to hang out at look same yeah All right, so Peyton tells Trevor that she had scheduled a cooking class for her boyfriend as his Christmas gift, but since Chad stinks, she's going to invite him if he's willing. They'll come to the house and teach him how to cook a meal, and he is all but too excited about it. So I am glad they addressed this. I'm glad he knows she has a boyfriend because I was worried Trevor didn't know that and that he's really falling for her while she has a boyfriend. I was going to have big ick vibes, but... He knows, presumably he knows there's boundaries there. We'll see. We'll see, yeah. Peyton gushes about Trevor to her her friends, and then they do the cooking class at his house, and the teacher is great at working with him and kind of helping him navigate the kitchen and navigate how much oil to put in since he's not like using traditional measuring tools, all of that. And then the teacher says that they make a cute couple. Whoops, (laughs) we're not a couple. (laughs) Why would you think that? And she's like, well, you booked it for you and your boyfriend. Oh, no, he's not my boyfriend. Ooh. <laughs> okay. She's like, I'm going to step out of this. Yeah. She's like, are you sure you're not boyfriend? I guess you look a lot like my boyfriend. <laughs> they just cheers to being new friends. And I said, I wrote my notes. I've never rooted for someone to break up with somebody so much in my life. <laughs> I know, right? And then they share memories of Christmas past. Mm. What did you think about the cooking montage? It wasn't really a montage as much as a small scene. I liked it. I thought that it was really well done. And I think that it was nice to see them doing something that was easy breezy, but at the same time, kind of romantic in the same way where it's sort of like we're working together toward a common thing. And then they got to enjoy it together, the whole nine yards. I thought it was really great. I bought it. And she put her hand on his shoulder at one point to encourage him and let her know she was there in the kitchen. All right. Peyton picks up Chad from the airport after his long golf excursion, and he slept the entire time in the vehicle. She says, okay, well, can we have dinner tonight? Because I'd like to hear about your trip. And he's like, well, I am got to go to bed early to get back to work tomorrow. Very busy, and he blows her off. So she goes to have a world-renowned hot chocolate with Trevor and Annie and it was very cute and Trevor spilled a little bit on him and Annie's like oh you got some on your shirt and he's like oh that's okay it's not going to stop me from having fun which I thought was kind of a throwaway thing but it comes back later it's mm-hmm. mirroring so Chad is talking to his bro Chainsaw about what to get Peyton for Christmas because he has not gotten her anything yet and he promised her a big Christmas surprise and he stinks it's clear he doesn't know anything about her. They're like, do you, does she carry a purse? Ah, uh, maybe, da, da 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 And he also says his budget's tight since the bros trip. So just when I thought I couldn't hate this loser anymore, ah, Chainsaw comes in. And they agree, here's what you should do. 
plan a trip to the beach next summer so you can kick the budget can down the road, but you can still get credit for making a big gesture and just write a very sweet note. Chad is the worst. It's basically like an IOU Christmas present, and it (laughs) is literally the worst. Like, if they want you to hate this character, you know what they've done, Jennifer? They totally Claire St. Clair'd this villain, and I they did. absolutely was here for it. Like, they wanted you to hate him, and I, <laughs> by golly, hated Chad. Like, he was every bit of they a... They went all in on him, oh. and I loved it. Because this is everything we've been saying. If you're going to have a villain, make him a big-time villain. Make us really hate him, and they did, and I am here for it. So, mm-hmm. even though I'm complaining about Chad... It's because I know Peyton deserves more. Really, I'm all about this character. So, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. okay, so Chad writes some half-hearted attempt at a, you know, I, I care about you note to give her in a big box. He goes to the clinic to drop off his present. He sees Peyton working with Trevor for training, and he goes in for a handshake, and he's like, oh, sorry, I forgot you can't see, basically. Like, it was just the most ignorant thing I've ever seen in my life. It was repulsive. And Trevor's like, okay, I'm going to go with my dog. Chad asks Peyton to dinner, and they go, and they're arguing, arguing, wow, words are hard, right out of the gate. And Chad spills wine on himself and freaks out, which I had to believe was a callback to the way Trevor handled spilling hot chocolate on his shirt versus how Chad handles spilling hot uh, wine on his shirt. And you got to love the Trevor approach more than the Chad approach. What absolutely absolutely i thought it was a perfect mirror and i think that she got to see both of them act differently the one thing that i loved about the scene prior where they're at the the training dog clinic is that chad says to trevor you're just another client to her so chad is clearly picking up that there might be something happening between trevor and his girlfriend and he wants to try to cut it off real quickly. And mm-hmm. he's very yes, jealous. Very but why? Jealous. You don't even like Peyton. You don't even like her. Uh, Ugh. Yeah. He tells Trevor that she treats everyone that way. Just another client. And then he says, Peyton is beautiful. You should see her. Ugh. And Trevor then says, I may be blind, but I can see pretty clearly that Peyton deserves better. Boom. Boom. Mike, Mike drop. drop. I said the same thing. Team Trevor all the way, baby. Oh, yeah. Yes. We're back at school with Annie, and there's this bit in this punk kid who's making fun of her dad and his blindness the whole movie in and out. And he touches her food in the cafeteria, which is gross. And Annie's had enough. She retaliates by shoving cake in his face. And then she's the one that gets in trouble and gets sent to the principal's office because she was violent towards him. Yes. So Trevor's at home and gets a call. And they, he says his full name, which I had not put together until this point, and it's Trevor Donovan. That's an actor's name. It is. It is. He was in Twas the Text Before Christmas over in Great American Family. I watched that, and I was like, do they realize what they've done here? Like, maybe? They have to. And he's been in a lot of Hallmark movies in the past, too, and Trevor Donovan. I was like, no way they did that. <laughs> I had to laugh. Oh, my gosh. So the school is calling about the cafeteria incident. Trevor goes down there and is scolded and says she does something again. She'll get suspended. And Trevor's peeved and wants justice because, hey, she's just like she's had enough with this kid. What are you doing to this kid to punish him? Nothing. Uh, So then back at the college campus. Um, the director, who we met earlier in the movie, shows up and he's heard that there was another construction mishap this morning with Trevor. And Trevor says, no, it wasn't an issue because Max helped me work around the construction, like, things in my way. And the director's like, mm, everyone's worried about you. And they encourage him to take leave. Why is everything falling apart for Trevor? It's like, boom, boom, boom. This is not an oopsie doodle. This is a, like, what's that um, book? The Terrible, No Good, Very Bad Day. Yes. Trevor's terrible, good, no good, very bad day. And I hated watching it. it made me sad. I know. I know. It was like everything was falling apart. And he has the the reaction many of us would when everything falls apart. You know, it just gets really, it gets really tough. And so this becomes the oopsie doodle, I think, Jennifer. What about you? I would agree. So Trevor goes to the clinic to return Max because he doesn't really need him anymore. Except he does. We all know he does. Come on. 
But he gives Peyton a gift that him and Annie had gotten her before he leaves. And of course, what did they get her? Her favorite perfume. Her friend and co-worker says, come here, you need to see this, which this is so far-fetched, but I'm still here for it. She found security footage of the Chad versus Trevor incident outside of the building when Chad was like, hey, she treats everybody like this. You're not special. And she sees it. She's like, see, I told you, Chad was bad. <laughs> bad Chad. So justice for Trevor, down with Chad. Peyton then rushes to his house, Chad's house, and breaks up with him. We then get sweeping B-roll shots that are sped up. Like, did yours do that? It was like, oh, here's yeah. a... Yeah, it was a weird I, I editing choice. I guess that's choice. to show the passage of time. Maybe. I don't know. It was a weird editing choice because this was the first time in the whole film we've gotten this sort of thing happening. So, anywho. Yeah, I didn't really understand that. So, Peyton goes to Trevor's class. He's giving an inspirational message. And then we get a flashback to footage from earlier in the film. Like, yes. a lot of scenes from earlier in the film. Also a choice. I thought he would know she was there because of the perfume. But we don't get that yeah. uh, until later. Okay, so Annie steps in when the punk kid is getting bullied at school by a bigger kid, and she gets the bully to leave the punk alone. So now Annie and the punk kid are friends. Everything's starting to shape up again. The class of Trevor's um, students, they all write letters to the director about how awesome Dr. Donovan is and that they don't want to take the class if he's not teaching it in the spring. Justice for Trevor again. Peyton goes to Trevor's house with Max and they reconcile and she uh, he did know she was there because of the perfume. I knew it. Knew it. Sense so it's vindicated. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Mm-hmm. They go pick up Annie at school and the punk kid says Merry Christmas to him. And he's like, what is happening? And she's like, yeah, we're cool now. Got it all figured out. They have Christmas together, Peyton, Trevor, and Annie, and it's snowing out. He tells Peyton she's beautiful inside and out. They kiss, twinkly piano music plays. And Annie and Max are looking on, and it made me chuckle. (laughs) I know. A little pervy, but it's, you know, it's cute. (laughs) Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) All right. It is time for our gold or coal segment. And here's what we do if you're new to the podcast. We're each going to give three gifts here. If there's more gold in the total total of them, it is going to be award-winning Hocho. If there's more coal here, it's just going to be wine spilled on your shirt. And then if there's a tie, three to three, we're just going to call it a meh, re-Christmas. Jennifer, you go first. I will go first. We got a despisable villain. Gold. Loved it. Thought it was so great. I was here for all of the antics. A lot of times we're just led to believe that the fiancés or the boyfriends and the girlfriends just aren't right for them. But we never really get why. Oh, we know why Chad stinks. And his buddy Chainsaw is a big contributing factor. Break up with Chad, dude. You're hanging out with uh, the wrong people. Yes. Loved it. Gold. Yes. Gold for Max as well. This dog is adorable. In fact, the whole time through, I was like, could we get a golden retriever? Like, I literally wanted to get a dog and Looking a up retriever. adoption shelter exactly. near my eye. <laughs> exactly. Because he's that yeah. cute. So I bought, I bought the relationship. <laughs> Between Max <laughs> and Tra- like, I bought it. I was here for it. It felt earned. You were here for it. You're not mad about it. <laughs> yes, gold for me. All of the things we say every episode. Are good. Um, this whole movie was just heartwarming. Okay, I was afraid it's gonna be sad. I did not get sad feels. I was my heart has not been this warm for the entirety of 2023 with these movies. Probably this is the warmest my heart has been. So I just thought it was really sweet, really cute. Loved the relationship developments. Gold. Yeah. I am going to also give gold. I thought they did a really nice job of representing the blind community and really sort of showing what life looks like, some of the common day challenges, some of the resources that are out there. And again, I really liked that they casted a blind, a legally blind actor in the male lead role here. I thought that that was a smart move. Well done. And I thought it was great. Uh, Greed. I gotta get just a, a tiny piece of gold or coal. I'm sorry, just like itsy bitsy, just like hardly with nothing. Shards, yes. Yeah. Mm-hmm. It's just like a little coal shard for the montage at the end, the flashback montage. I hate when they do that. It never really seems to make sense. I will let it slide on this one to the point that 
it was when he smelled her perfume, he was reflecting on their relationship, I guess, and the moments they had shared together. But it also had like a flashback of him getting licked by Max, the dog. So I don't know. It just, <laughs> I got to give it Cole. I didn't need it. I'm sorry. Mm-hmm. I don't like the flashback montages. There you go. I'm giving a little bit of Cole as well. There were points in this movie where it was a little draggy. Like it just needed a little bit more than dialogue to move it forward. We got a lot of them sort of sitting and talking on benches and things like that and and that sort of thing, which I mean, I get that you're trying to develop the relationship there, but there were points of this where I just, you know, was looking at my watch or looking at my phone and kind of wondering just how much more time we had, that kind of thing. So just tiny little piece of coal. So bottom line here, Jennifer, not too shabby. So for those of you who think that we hate all of the movies that we watch, we clearly we don't. don't. This one. We had... try to be very optimistic and very, true and fun. <laughs> very optimistic and true. <laughs> we though. try to have fun. <laughs> yeah. This one had four gold, two coals, so we are going to call it award-winning Hocho. I thought this one was heartwarming, like you said. Surprising, because usually these Hallmark movies and mysteries ones, I'm going to cry at some point. I didn't cry during this one. It said it gave me a fair amount of good holly jolly feels, and I really thought the scenery was pretty, too. So I would watch it again. Mm-hmm. Uh, agreed. I thought it was really sweet, really heartwarming. I liked the daughter character and the father daughter relationship. Thought it was very sweet. So, didn't Worth. cry. I'm okay about that. Don't want to cry. Let's move on. There you go. <laughs> Worth the watch. And that, friends, is another episode of Do You Watch What I Watch? Special thanks, as always, to our friend Nick Schwartz for our theme song and to you for listening or watching. Hey, do you like our podcast? We know you do. You made it all the way through this one. So thank you. (laughs) Thank you for investing the time. Go ahead and like, subscribe, tell a friend, leave a comment. All of it really helps us to grow our community here at the podcast. You can find links to everything you want on our website at doyouwatchwhatiwatch.com. Hey, next time we are going to be going back to the Hallmark Channel for another countdown to Christmas movie. This one is called The Santa Summit, and here's the synopsis. Jordan returns home to regroup after some setbacks and attends the town's annual celebration with friends. She bonds with Liam, but doesn't get his name before they're separated in a sea of Santas. We will certainly, Jennifer, have much to discuss. And until then... Hey, your days be merry and bright. We'll see you next time.